Whenever I talked about the passing of George Floyd or any race relations issues in the past, I always said that coming from Plumborough, where I was from, which is a lower middle class, majority white community, and then I go into the locker room at West Virginia University, I got a chance to meet guys from Compton. I got a chance to meet guys from all over the world. And once you get a chance to kind of meet these people and put a face to causes and come together and go for one, I always said that a football locker room is a place, a melting pot that I wish could venture into the real world. I wish that somehow the, the locker room could go into America. Now, you are in a very important time here in talking to your team, messaging to your team in the world that we're in. How have you been handling that with your squad and what has your message been to your team? Well, I, I think one thing, I, I think with our with uh, a lot of the things for our guys, uh, as you said, I think it is, is a unique deal because our guys have a, a feel. I think when you're in that locker room, when you're around all the different guys, um, it is different. I, I wish some of that would, more of that would get out into society. Uh, you know, that feeling, that togetherness, that teamness. Uh, but I know for our guys, I, th I think one big challenge is w when you look at, at respecting the respect of people, where you, you don't always, you know, I, you can't put yourselves in other people's shoes and know how they feel, know how they think, know how it is. But I think it's important to respect other people in that way you know it's it's important to respect uh what it must be like to go through that and have that respect for other people don't try to assume i know what's best for you or you know what's best for me and and i i hey i know what it must feel like to walk in your shoes uh one of the things we talked about the other day was that it's just is having the respect of the communicate and respect other people's thoughts ideas um uh, you know their their religious backgrounds. When you get in a team, when you when you get in that that locker room, uh, guys come from different racial backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. Uh, you know, and, and but everybody kind of respects us, respects each other, respects the work that they do, respects the work that they put in, uh, respects their contribution to the team. And as we get in this society, it, it, that we can respect other people. You know, I, I and. I think that is such an important thing. Don't don't try to assume something from somebody else. Just respect their background, respect who they are, you know, and, and really try to bring love and caring into the community. I, I think th that is it. it when you, you can have that respect to people and that love for other people, um, it's going to go a long way. It's a special place, that locker room. And I think the reason why the bonding happens is because you go through things together. You're going through workouts at 6 a.m. together. You're going through conditioning that's miserable. You're going through training camp. You're going through the highs, the lows of a football season together. And I think America went through something together in the coronavirus quarantine. That's why I think the response to the George Floyd murder was everybody was on the same side because we were kind of like all in this thing together. And then obviously the riots and, protest, or the riots and violence took a different direction. But I think we're in a better place than we've been and I think we're closer to real change for real equality for everybody than we've ever been now let's talk about you speaking of the coronavirus and the quarantine and now protests and riots and the world being upside down this is not an easy time to be a football coach this is not an easy time to build a team I'd assume how have you guys been handling it? has it been zoom calls what has been the thought process going through this all well, you know, we, we've done a lot, you know, and we, and we, as a coach, you're trying to mix things up, mix things up, keeping everybody engaged, keeping everybody, uh, you know, focused on, on our goal of trying to become a better football team. And, you know, so we've done it. We've had a lot of the, we've done all the Zoom meetings uh, that have been out there. Uh, you know, when you're you're come in and you do a Zoom team meeting, we've had a lot of different guest speakers come from different walks of life to try to, you know, I mean, mix it up and give give some different advice, give some different things of how how guys have succeeded in their career, how to manage your career, how to manage life beyond football, um, motivational speakers, all kinds of different things, and then a lot of football meetings. Uh, you know, we're pretty fortunate. Our guys, on starting on Monday, on June 8th, our guys can come back for voluntary workouts on Here campus. Here we go. Here we uh, go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, you know, and, and, hey, we don't have everybody coming back, and I'm great with that. You know, I mean, guys are kind of in a routine at home. They're in it. in it. it they feel comfortable with their settings. They feel they're going to be able to take care of themselves there. You know, even though we can come back and have voluntary workouts, uh, we're still going to be in virtual meetings uh, and Zoom meetings and, and that, we're, that we're using. And uh, so for us, you know, hopefully it continues to progress in that direction. I think any time – you know, one of the things is there is so much change going on and change is very uncomfortable for people. 
you know, and then, you know, that that's one thing that is hard is change is uncomfortable for a lot of people. And when, you know, we're changing and I, and I, not the, the social aspect of everything we're trying to change is football right now. You know, we, we didn't have spring practice. We're not back as a team going through summer conditioning as a whole team together right now. So it is going to be a great deal of change for us football wise, getting back together. And, you know, ours is, you know, when, when you handle this, uh, everything that's going on with the coronavirus right now is is a word. It's an adversity you're dealing with, and it's an adversity. Hopefully, that we attack head on and we get better. And you know, anytime you handle, you, you're faced with adversity, you have an opportunity to get better. Yeah. And hopefully, we're we're a team that has handled adversity as well or better than any other team out there. And if that's the case, when we do kick off, um, you know, hopefully in the fall, that foot hits the ball. Uh, we've dealt with adversities as a team. We've we've found a way to get stronger. We've found a way to continue to get better, and we handle adversity in a better way. And we come out ready to go play football uh, when we get on the field. What have you been hearing about the return to football? There's always the Ohio State guy came out and he said we think we can have 25 percent, and then the Saints came out and said 13,000, and then Texas was like you can have 25 percent uh, capacity in the stadiums. I don't think anybody has a clue. So I think there's been a lot of things thrown at the wall. What have you been hearing? What are the realistic expectations you think for when the football games will start back up on time or not well i certainly hope that we're going to start up on time i I think the one thing we have to do is look and say okay you know as it pertains to uh the football scheduling and where we're at uh we're three months away from kickoff okay the beginning of june so if if you go back to the beginning of march um you know as far as where we are with this pandemic the world we were in a much different place here in the united states march 1st than we are today uh, so for me to say this is where we're going to be September 1st, I think is really irresponsible. You know, I, I think, um, you know, one of the things we can do, and I, I think uh, people are going to come out of this. I, I think, you know, the first month, everyone, yeah, he didn't, didn't handle it the right way. Then we get into learning how to grow, learning how to social distance, learning how to, you know, I mean, to wear my, my gator mask Ooh. walking around. <laughs> oh, that's a good master. Oh, uh, <laughs> Smart uh, mask, but I think I think I think we're a lot more responsible about things and how to deal with this and how to deal with the change that's going on. So, um, you know, to sit there and say, "Hey, September first, we're going to have this percentage of people in the stands," or we're going to start the season on this day exactly right now. That's so far off into the future. I, I think what we have to do is continue our responsibility to continue to progress in the right direction. Here in Florida, our governor did a great job. The state reopened. Um, I think people have reopened in a very responsible manner. You're seeing people outside a lot more, kind of getting back to uh, the new normal of life, if you will. Um, and you haven't seen a, a, a huge spike in cases. So I think our governor, our, our university president, administration have done a good job. And we continue to take these small steps forward. And if we can continue to take the small steps forward, continue to grow, continue to get back to life as normal. Well, I, I, I'm interested to see where we're going to be a month from now. I'm interested. You know, we're at a different place yeah. today than we were a month ago. I think um, we all, hey, by the way, I, I want to see where we're going to keep going. And as long as we're responsible and I don't see why we can't start football on time and hopefully have fans in the stands. Yeah, I think that's a very smart way to look at it. Adam Silver of the NBA, he was the first commissioner to come out and say, I'm not giving any real timetable until at least June. Because there was a lot of predictions being made at certain times, and they were both gloom, doom, and like, yeah, we'll be able to do it. And then two days later, we get a whole new thing. And we live in a very, I don't know, question mark future world right now. Nobody knows. That's the right way to look at it. But as a football coach, you've had a lot of success with a lot of quarterbacks. Alex Smith. Dak Prescott, Tim Tebow. Whenever you're, to, by the way, shout out Tim Tebow. <laughs> shout out Tim Tebow. Mm-hmm. We're a big Tim Tebow show around here, Dan. But the, um, what has it been like working with your players? You can't really change much, I'd assume, in this Zoom meeting, right? It, it's just got to be like kind of driving home the things that they already know. Hopefully, is that have you changed any tactics and changed any anything in, in the off season here? You know, I mean, what you work on is, you know, one of the big things when this all started, we talked to our guys is don't worry about what you can't worry. You know, don't 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 spend all this time worrying about what we can't do. Let's worry about what we can do and how to get better in those things. You know, I mean, because I mean, every, everything you sit there and I know hey, it's hard. It's human nature. I mean, as a coach, I, I you know, I'm frustrated. I work very detailed. I like my schedule. I like to know, OK, tell me what I'm going to do in July and in August. I'm going to have it detailed and exact. Um 
So you, but you have, you can't worry about that right now. You have to worry about the things you can control and get better. So, you know, we, we had a, a, a meeting this morning with our staff and said, okay, Hey, we've gone through the installation. We've gone through cutups. We've watched the video. You know, now it's our guys are teaching each other. Now, hey, I want to hear the I want to hear you as a player teach me. Well, how are we building the knowledge within uh. the game? How are you building your knowledge as a player right now? Because it's it's hard. I can't get out there and technically teach you. I'm not. You know, I'm not worried about. Well, you know, it's hard for me to get out there, show you weight transition, and, and technically do a lot of fundamentals and technique. But we certainly can work the brain and the knowledge and processing of information and. Um, you know, so we're, we're finding different ways to try to do that, have our guys process information, learn faster, learn quicker, uh, see it and recognize it and train the brain as best we can, because that's one of the things we certainly can work on in meetings right now. In between the years is the most important place on earth. Literally, you're either going to make it or you're I not. Mean, you're, because- a, you're a specialist. So there's only so many times Athlete. I can go through, you know, I mean kick the ball between the uprights on the video right you know what i'm saying i mean the scheme for place kickers isn't quite as huge so, all right i mean those guys i'm like i'm you know i have them making stupid videos of each other and kind of trying to keep themselves abused because there's only so much i could do with those guys but you know the quarterbacks it's a different deal we, you know i i mean i i, I tell our you know our, our long snapper you know you got about four or five different punt schemes i mean <laughs> Catch the, the, the you know the punter. We're punting right. We're punting middle. We're punting left. Take it okay, easy. Watch it hey, that field. is hard. To go. That is hard and to it, understand, Coach. I mean, that is difficult stuff to pick up. I've always said punters and kickers don't get enough respect for the playbook diligence. We know our plays inside and out better than anybody else on the roster. 